The Angels begin a two-game series against the Miami Marlins, and we'll get you ready for tonight's game, and we'll tell you what the Angels need to do to try to get back to 500. Plus, there's some talk about robo-umps and Mike Myers as a starter. You're locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked on Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, John and I thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. If you're listening on the audio side, you can rate and review the pod. It helps people to find it. And if you're watching on the video side, you can subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's episode is brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Angel listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. Use the code Locked On at checkout. Hey, thank you for joining us for this edition of Locked On Angels. You've got the Frisch Brothers, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros, here with you. My name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. And just so you know, if you're joining us for the first time, we are lifelong fans of the Angels who have stuck with them through thick and thin, and we know that this season started out thick and now it's very thin so but we're <laughs> still good. here with you we appreciate you being here with us and we appreciate you listening and we're so glad to have you and thanks for joining in on the conversation about our halos mike we have a quick two game set in miami against the marlins that means that they're going to be playing some early games on tuesday and wednesday so yep. we are get here to prepare you for that one so let's take a look at the pitching matchups that we have going in these two games against the marlins Thor is going to be pitching. How how convenient because the new Thor movie is going to be coming out. And so ah. Noah Syndergaard is going to be pitching against the Marlins. And Sandy Alcantara is going to be pitching for Whew. the Marlins. He actually is having a really good season. Eight and yes, three, a one nine five ERA, Johnny, with mm. 97 strikeouts. And so that, that is nervous. going to, it's going to be a game, <laughs> right? And it's one of those games where it either is going to be like a nothing, nothing until the sixth inning type of game or Noah Syndergaard will give up a few runs and it'll be five, nothing by the second. And it'll be one of those games where we're like, is there anything else on? Cause that <laughs> seems to be what happens with Syndergaard starts lately. And then Wednesday Shohei Otani is back on the mound and he's going up against Trevor Rogers, who is having mm -hmm. a difficult season four and six. 556 five, ERA 62 Ks. I decided that I'm going to wear my show nose hey, shirt that you, you go. got me for Christmas. And so I'm just going to change the vibes for the Angels. And I'm hoping that maybe we can get both of these games. I like our starters and I like yeah. our chances. And our pitching staff, our starting pitching staff has actually been pretty strong. Right. And so if they're if they're on it, our offense just needs to step it up. Yeah, with these two starters in particular, with Syndergaard and, of course, Shohei, who's been phenomenal over his last three starts and really all season long. You know, yeah. he's only had one or two bummer starts. But, yeah, it just goes to show that uh, it goes to show that when Shohei is on the mound, <laughs> you can have a little bit of confidence there. Mike, some of the interesting facts about the Marlins, uh, we haven't seen them since the beginning of the season. Right. Where we played them and we went 2-0 against them. We won 6-2 to two and 4 to three, but we did not see Sandy Alcantara. We did not see Trevor Rogers in that series. We actually saw uh, former A prospect, uh, Jesus Lazardo. Yep. Uh, he was one of the ones that we went up against. And uh, we also didn't see the full potential of Jazz Chisholm, and he yep. uh, has had a phenomenal season up to this point. Fortunately for the Halos, he is on the IL, so he will not make this series. But another one to watch out for has been Garrett Cooper. That guy huh. is hitting, hitting, and hitting. And so he has been a bright spot in the Marlins lineup. But you know what's funny is the Marlins have a, a very similar record to us and kind of a similar trajectory as well. But here's where we currently stand before this two-game series. We're 37 and 44. And you and I have said if we could get to 500 by the All-Star break, that would actually be a great refresh restart reset yeah. moment for the halos yep. because you know i know that we just passed the halfway point a couple of days ago but here we are 
the all-star break is kind of a proto halfway point for the season, even though it's not quite the middle, but it would be nice to be back at 500. Uh, But if we're going to do that by the all-star break, we have a tough road ahead and it starts with this Marlins series. Let's talk about how that looks. If we would like to get back to 500. Well, and this is the conversation that we had last year on the Super Halo Bros pod because mm-hmm. we were talking about like, hey, if we could just win these games, if we could go this this many wins and compared to this many losses, then mm-hmm. we could get back to 500 or we could be in competition or we could be competitive, right? And so for the record, I'm sick of these conversations, but yeah, I no do kidding. hope. I do hope the Angels can put some things together. Here's where it's really going to be difficult. We're going to have to turn the volume knob up. We're going to have to mm-hmm. flip the switch because I think we need to sweep the Marlins, which mm-hmm. would bring us to 39 and 44. Yeah. We've got the Orioles and we're playing them in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. And so we have to take three or four from them. We'll be 42 wow. and 45. And they're they've, always a tough play, right? They've gotten really good uh, since the beginning of June. Uh, so they have, <laughs> they are not the same Baltimoreals, just trying to save time Yeah, uh, that we saw earlier this season. And they actually they swept us in three games right. when we were good. So right. I'm a little yeah. concerned about what this weekend is going to look like. But yes, we would need to take three of four from Baltimore. Yeah, and then we go home and the Astros visit, and we would have to take two or three from the Astros. That would put mm. us at 44 and 46. And if we're going to finish at 500 at the All Star break, the Dodgers come in, and we're going to have to beat them in two straight games that would put Mm. us at 46 and 46 at the all-star break. So Johnny, here's the question. Your angel fandom needs to speak here, right? Is it possible for the team to do this or is there a different scenario that you have in mind for the angels as they get to the all-star break? I don't know, man. I just, I I have not had any reason to hope that these guys are going to do any better on the way to the all-star break. I understand we brought up Stefanik. We got Jonathan Villar over at third. Uh, Fletcher will probably be back after the all-star break, so we can't quite count on him. Luis Renjifo's turned a corner, um, but the strikeouts are killing us. And uh, we had that silly quote from Phil Nevin over the weekend about how a strikeout is better than a double play. And it's like, don't make excuses. Stop making excuses for this. Let's figure it out. Let's figure out why we're striking out. So I just don't know. I mean, you and I are always hopeful. We're always trying to stay positive and, and try to find the bright side and, and not to be a homer, but just to say, Hey, here's the potential that we could right. have. Right. And, and then the worst case scenario, obviously everybody knows what that is, but, but to get back to 500 is just going to be a tough road ahead. The only thing I will say is that Houston series would be tough. Of course, the Dodgers series will be tough, but we play the Dodgers very well at home for some reason, even we though the Dodger fans come and flood Angel Stadium, like we flood Dodger Stadium when we play them there. So I, I have hope that we could take two games from the Dodgers. And I hope some of these moves that we've made are going to be game changers in this. Not that they're going to move us forward as superstars, but at least we have a third baseman playing third base. At least yeah. we finally brought up a good hitter yeah. in Michael Stefanik. And uh, I really hope that they don't play the matchups again, because uh, like you mentioned, Trevor Rogers is a lefty. So uh, if they take Walsh out of that lineup again, they're really going to be hurting themselves because they can't keep doing that. And I even think that even though you have a lefty in there, I still think you go Shohei to Walsh back to back because that has mm. been a pretty nice combination and it's pretty uh, daring and it's pretty tough to face those two back to back as well. Well, it seems like everything has just not gone our way, including umpire calls. So coming up on Locked on Angels, we're going to talk about that rumor that the Robo Umps are going to be here possibly next season. And we're going to talk about if we're pro Robo Umps or pro Human Umps. And we're going to tell you what Matt Theis and Max Stassi said about that. But first, Locked on Angels is brought to you by BlueNile.com. Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone, Find jewelry as unique as her with modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. They will help you to create the custom engagement ring of your dreams. At BlueNile.com, you'll find simple tools that will let you choose the diamond shape, the diamond size, and the clarity, as well as the setting style. And they'll help you if you have no idea what you're doing. These guys are so good, and they're one-of-a-kind online jewelers. And... They'll do all of this at a price 
that you won't find at traditional jewelry stores. And so go to BlueDial.com. They're the original online jeweler. And if it's not perfect, no problem. 100% satisfaction guarantee. And if you need that special purchase fast, in most cases, Blue Nile can deliver overnight. And every order is insured. And it arrives in a discreet package that won't give away what's inside. So make your special moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On Angel listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. So use the code Locked On at checkout. That's Locked On at checkout and go to BlueNile.com today. Hey, Mike, here's a name you probably haven't heard in a while. Mike Myers. Oh, hey, the actor <laughs> like Austin Powers or, uh, <laughs> or, the, or the mass murderer or the mass murderer. <laughs> oh, the pitcher. You mean the, the pitcher, pitcher for the angels? <laughs> the pitcher. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he began the season with us and he really struggled out of the bullpen. And the last time yeah. we saw him, uh, he <laughs> he was pretty good. In the second half of 2021, 2020, he was somebody we really relied on. I don't know right. if that's because the rest of the bullpen was terrible and he was decent, but he had the ability to get strikeouts and get outs. And so he was pretty good in 2020. We we're kind of hoping that he could have that late 2021 results that he was getting this season just wasn't happening. So he got sent down to triple A. And since then, they have been trying him out and lengthening his his outings and trying him out as a starter. So Mike Myers, the starter, is that what's going to happen here? Well, it's probably good because, uh, interesting note, we're playing the Marlins, and the last time we played the Marlins, that second game where we won 4-3, to three, the reason mm-hmm. why we won 4-3 to three is because Mike Myers came in and blew the lead, and we had to actually <laughs> battle back to win that game. Rysel Iglesias won that game, and so oh, Mike, that's a typical given, Mike given Myers Rysel story, win. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's interesting, an interesting move to move him to – a starter. He did pitch about a week ago last Thursday, went five and two thirds, three hits, gave up two runs, 84 pitches. And here's an Mm. interesting note, Johnny Myers was actually a starter in the minors for the Cardinals. He Mm -hmm. only made three starts and and then it was all as an opener at the MLB level. Mm -hmm. And he looked good last Thursday. Here is some notes from that start. He had 13 swings and misses, which is Hmm. always really positive. His fastball was between 92 and 94. He topped out at 95. He threw that 46% of the time. He had a slider that he threw in there, and he also had a change. And the changeup is is new. He hasn't really thrown a change, and he hasn't thrown a change really since 2019. Wow. And so that's interesting. And what scouts are saying is that it's similar to Sandoval's changeup. Somebody said, oh, wow. whoever's teaching that changeup should be the pitching coach for the Angels because yeah, that no changeup is devastating. And so that's an interesting move to have Mike Myers as a starter. You had a note about how much time he has left with the Angels because we were asking, like, why? Why this move if it's not going to benefit the Angels? But it sounds like he maybe have, has another season of arbitration. Am I right there? Yeah, next year is an arbitration year, and then he's a free agent in 2024. So we would have him all through next season, which, you know, I'm of two minds here. I kind of wonder if they try to make him a starter or if he is going to be that long reliever that they've needed out of the bullpen. Because like a Jaime Berea, maybe, on, yeah. We've counted on Jaime Berea so much because – the starters are just not getting length uh, out of their starts. And so we've had Jaime kind of come in and clean it up and keep the game close at times and then just finish a game at times. And so I wonder if if uh, Myers is going to be that kind of pitcher. Uh, perhaps they want to have the option of, of, of him out of the bullpen or even using him as a starter, maybe an opener. But I really could see him taking a similar path to Jaime Berea. And remember, Jaime mm. Berea doesn't have any options. So that's why he has stuck around on this team. That's and so right. I kind of wonder, you know, do they want to move him? Do they want to turn him into a starter and have Mike Myers take that long relief role? Or perhaps it's just fairly obvious that they want Mike Myers to try it out as a starter. Um, and of course, there's with that six man rotation, we've had a floating sixth man all season long. So right. Myers right. could easily make a spot start. Because he has more options, he can be sent up and sit down. So maybe that's another route that they're willing to go. But what do you think about this this move of Mike Myers 
starting. This actually causes me to think about what they're going to do with Chris Rodriguez because mm. Chris has been hurt and they were going to convert him to a starter. And yeah, I'm really true. intrigued by that. I don't think that Myers takes his spot. That's not what I'm saying. Sure. But I, but I do see this as a similar move and you're right. Myers might be that if we need an emergency starter, mm -hmm. it just feels like we have more of, the Mike Myers on our teams and Jaime Berea's then we do some of the stronger starters like yeah. a Reed Detmers. And maybe that's going to start shifting as we see Kai Bush come up and again, chase Silseth. But I, I would love to see him factor in and pitch really well for us. And at this point, let's get somebody in there that can hold that six spot down and hold it down consistently. Right. But again, it goes back to our manager and not pulling them out of the game too soon. And, and my concern with Myers is because they're, Oh, we're still stretching him out. So he got to 84 pitches. So we can't have him in there for too long. Right. It just doesn't feel like it's beneficial to the team. If Myers is only pitching three and two thirds to start mm -hmm. the game, and then mm -hmm. you've got to bring in all the bullpen pieces, right. Which is why I think the bullpen has struggled. They just yeah. look exhausted and there's been a lot of overuse. I got to be honest. I don't see Chris Rodriguez factoring in as a starter in the future. I think this shoulder issue that he's dealt with kind of time and time again, the back issue, I think that the more length you get out of him, the more at risk you put him for that. I think mm. that he is a great piece out of the bullpen. I think Agreed. he's got nasty stuff and he can give you a little bit of length. He, he's done that in the past, but man, it was really exciting to see him come out of that pen last season and then, of course, the injuries kind of piled on, and that's where he is this season, yeah. just on the injured list. So when he comes back, I imagine they will keep him out of the bullpen. I just don't – I can't see them factoring him in as a starter after all of these injuries have piled up on him. Do you think Mike Myers will be somebody that they may can – maybe they can – package and put in a deal do you think that that's part of why they're cr creating a starter here or are they just trying to bring value back to this guy and maybe see if he can benefit their team or benefit a trade to another team i could see him being a trade piece i mean look he came from the cardinals organization and anybody coming out of that system is going to be some somebody who's desired right yeah and i think that when he struggled as a reliever there's a lot of mental stuff there that you can see. He just never seemed confident. And, and even though there was a period of time in 2020 and late 2021 where he really seemed to have it together, it, Mike Myers does not seem like a, like a dog on the mound. You know what I mean? It seems yeah. like he really yeah. struggles to have confidence in his stuff. And so perhaps this move as a starter is helping him learn to be more confident in the stuff that he has. That changeup is certainly going to help him. But sure. he could be he could be an excellent trade piece in the future. Unless he's a starter who can contribute to this team in a meaningful way, I could see him also being moved because people like that are are much desired in, in Major League Baseball. Yeah. Well, today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With so many different makes and models of cars today, it can be nearly impossible to expect your local auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. But rockauto.com has access for you to all the parts your car will ever need, from brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. They have it all. And here's the good news. Rock Auto is a family-owned business, and they're serving you do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. And because they're family-owned, they understand budgets, which is why Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. So if you're working on your car, Start by going to rockauto.com. You can see everything that they have available for your car or for your truck, whether it's new or whether it's old. They're going to hook you up. They're going to help you out. And when you go to rockauto.com, make sure that you write locked on in their how did you hear about us box. That way they know that we sent you from locked on angels. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Go to rockauto.com today. Mike, uh, Rob Manfred, commissioner of baseball, has uh, said the other day that the robo umps could show up in 2024. I think this is something that Rob Manfred will definitely want to do because he wants to gain favor in the eyes of fans as yep. desperately as possible because up yep. until this point, there's no reason to like Rob Manfred at all. He's talking about expanding to 32 teams in the future. He's talking about the pitch clock, which could be up here in the next season or so, but in two years, we could see robo umps show up in 2024. You and I have been very frustrated with some of the calls that we get 
from these umpires. That down and away strike on Shohei Otani <laughs> yeah. drives me yeah. insane. And it's not just one umpire, it's all of the umpires. The same could be said for Aaron Judge because he's so tall. These umpires don't know where the strike zone is for him. And, uh, and, and then we learned that the one that you see on TV, the rule book strike zone that the umpires go by is like a little bit wider, or a little bit taller. Mm. And so it's just like, well, then what's a strike zone, right? Yeah. Because we don't yeah. have a consistent strike zone between each hitter and between each umpire. So Robo Wumps on the way. How do we feel about this? Well, we heard from Max Stassi and Matt Thice and Jeff Fletcher from the OC Register caught up with them. Uh, Max Stassi had some interesting things to say. He said, as a catcher, it's going to completely change the position. He said mm. it takes away from the art of catching, which we have seen become more prominent lately. When we first traded for Mal Martin Maldonado from the Brewers, they said he was a great pitch framer, that he wasn't a productive catcher, but he was a great pitch framer. And I remember thinking, what in the world is pitch framer? Right, and right. In, in the five years since... The entire league is all about pitch framing and stealing strikes and and trying to get their pitchers through as best as they can. Uh, but Stassi said if catchers don't need to worry about how they receive the ball, they could position themselves on both knees to block the baseballs. That's interesting. They could, they could have their bodies turned to make a quick quicker throw so they could be prepared for that runner to steal second. And this one got me. He said that would all require changes to the catcher's equipment. That hmm. is a significant piece of information right there yeah coming from max stassi he also said pitch calling would change if a catcher didn't have to worry about the ways that the balls were presented to the umpire so they catch the ball and you often see the glove moving in toward the zone because yeah. they're trying to you know make the umpire think it was closer than it actually was and uh responses to stassi have been that catches catchers will simply have to adjust the idea is to get the pitches called accurately so mm. i think that's something that all mlb fans would like to see i know there's a lot of arguing about like well it's what about the human element and you're changing the game and da, 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 da. it's time there have been so sure. many bad calls especially as umpires have been more scrutinized lately with like umpire scorecards yeah i think it's time to make a change but especially what this season it feels yeah. like it's just been terrible this season yeah. everybody's taking notes from angel hernandez and we shouldn't yeah. be taking notes from him so right it was interesting to see what Stassi said. And then Matt Theis, who actually has experienced the system, it's called ABS. Mm -hmm. He experienced it in AAA and he's been down there for more than a month. And here's what he had to say. He said, personally, I was skeptical about it at first. As a hitter, I thought breaking balls at the bottom of the zone were going to clip the zone and bounce and be called strikes. But I mm. haven't seen that once. And to me personally, I feel like it's been pretty tight pretty accurate and I haven't really seen any mess ups as a catcher. And then Thice also said that the calls come really, really quick, which was a corrected issue because I guess there was a test in the Arizona fall league and the lower minor league levels that was really struggling with getting the calls. But Thice huh. says that I haven't seen a delay once. And he said, as soon as I'm catching the ball, the umpire has, whether it's a ball or a strike. So mm -hmm. hearing what Stassi said and hearing what Thice said, what do you think about all of this, Johnny? Are you pro ABS or are you pro umps? It sounds like it's going to be a mix of both. How do you feel about it after watching what's happened this season to the Angels specifically? I'm ready for it. It's time to make that change. It should have been made a long time ago. The fact that they still have to be testing it out and this isn't something they thought of doing 10 years ago, right? Yeah. Especially with the graphics on screen, you can see where the call is and what, what it should have been. And you're not going to lose the element of the umpire because we've already seen the human element so to speak go away with out and safe calls yes on the bases yes they're able to challenge and look at the replay and see if it really was out or safe so they've already corrected that and that hasn't i mean again that's that was a human element that was often frustrating because the guy was clearly safe or clearly out and it changed the outcome of the game do you want the human error to change the outcome of the game? Or do you want the players to get the results that they deserve by yes. playing well? Right. Yeah. And so I think that this is just another element to that because you're, you have the human element on the base paths unless they can challenge and review the call. But that has been a game changer because now we can see that, Oh, so-and-so was safe. So-and-so was out. That was a bang, bang play, but they got him out. That's pretty cool. And 
that's exactly what you want. You want the real results. You don't want, you know, Angel Hernandez making the wrong call or <laughs> whoever yeah. it is, Doug Eddings yeah. winning our, our championship game, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> right. uh, you want, you want these players to get the results that they deserve, whether that's, you know, sliding into second and getting a safe call or the defense making a great double play turn. It, it doesn't. And it, what I like about it is it doesn't remove the human umpires. It doesn't remove them from their jobs. Like sure. they're still going to be there, but it, now it just makes it accurate. And yeah. and I think that it gives, it gives the umpires some humility, like, because yeah. you know, what's his face? Uh, Angel Hernandez drove out of a game not too long ago <laughs> after some terrible calls and was busting a gut and cracking yeah. up and laughing. Right. Like, like you, you, you no longer have that power you are at the disposal of the buzzer or whatever you have that tells you it's a ball or a strike, which is great because then they're really, it takes away the argument. It really does take away the show. Hey, shaking his hand at the umpire going, no, 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 no. That was terrible. Right. It, it takes away all of those arguments because now we have an accurate account of where that ball hit. And I love what Thy said, like even those balls that are going to clip the zone, the, the system has been accurate to call it a mm-hmm. ball or to call it a strike. Mm-hmm. And so that's it's, impressive. It's, it's going to change approaches as well, right? Some of the approaches that we've seen that the angels have had, think Brandon Marsh for a moment, who struggled mm-hmm. with striking out for a few weeks there. And Marsh was like, no, that ball's off the corner. That ball's over. Here. Now he, now he can't argue that. Then he'll have to go, Hey, you know what? I got to protect. I got to throw the bat out there yeah. and I got to make sure that I'm, I'm getting ready and making contact so that I can help my team. And so that's what I like about this. I think that it will be a positive change. It'll be a positive change for umpires because they probably won't get the heat that they have received this year. Right. And then it'll be positive for those that are at the plate. And I think it'll be positive for pitchers as well. And catchers, catchers don't have to, as Stassi said, like you don't have to like prepare yourself for something. You can get ready to throw runners out. Maybe those percentages go up as well this could be a really great benefit for a catcher that's why maldonado was traded that's why the angels picked him up right yeah and he got a great contract from the astros because he was a good pitch framer this might actually take let's say for example i'm going to use a former angel jeff mathis right Mm -hmm. he hung around and hung around and hung around because of his defense right couldn't hit a lick i could hit more than him but (laughs) Guys like that might actually have more opportunity for jobs because now it's not going to be pitch framing. Now they might actually be able to set themselves up to throw people out or they might set themselves up for whatever it might be behind the plate with the robo um. So I'm a fan. I like it. And I think it'll be really beneficial in 2024. I don't know if Mathis can't p- can't pitch frame because the robo umps are p- doing it for him, then he's not going to have a job. <laughs> but look, you're right. It's exactly right. The, the, the umpires seem to love the heat that they get. I don't quite understand that. And yeah. you think that they would want this system too, because it's going to bail them out, out of making horrible calls, basically. Like it's, it's the system that we need. It's the system that's going to keep them in check. And it's going to give us an accurate representation. I know people are going to say, well, did you see this in AAA where it was way outside and it got called a strike? Like, they're figuring it out. That's what's happening right yep. now. They're test- That's why you do these tests. you got to run these programs and figure it out. And until it's right, you keep testing it out. And that's why it's going to take two years. So all of that to say, I think that <laughs> these umpires who are arrogant, they kind of love the arrogance that comes along with it. But this will really bring some humility to the position, I think. Well, heat is only good in professional wrestling, so umpires need to know that, right? And thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Now make your second listen. The Locked On MLB Prospects show host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep into the MLB stars of tomorrow. His podcast is free and available wherever you get podcasts. Hey, if you've got any thoughts you want to share with us about RoboUmps or any of the matters that we discussed here, maybe Mike Myers, you can give us a, a tweet at Locked On Angels. Reach out to us there, or you can connect with Mike and I on Twitter and Instagram at Super Halo Bros. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Well, even though the Angels have been struggling, Shohei had an incredible, incredible June, especially mm-hmm. on the mound. And so, of course, there's talk about him being the MVP. So tomorrow we're going to ask, is he the MVP over Aaron Judge? Ooh. John and I will give you our opinions. I think you know which way we're going to lean. <laughs> That's tomorrow on Locked On Angels. We're going to give you reasonable uh 
information that makes sense and it's yes. gonna it's gonna yes. be backed up with data Thoughtful. yeah, all that kind of stuff. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly as i wear my show nose shirt. that's right that's right <laughs> all right y'all until tomorrow's episode we'll see you back here again my name is john and that's my brother mike and my name is mike and that's my brother john and thanks for joining us for this edition of locked on angels and we'll see you tomorrow